This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 35 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Mike Compton. More about Mike in a moment. Our guest on Monday's episode is Julie Broad. Julie is the founder of Book Launchers and an Amazon overall number one bestselling author and International Book Award winner. She founded a company that helps entrepreneurs write their first book and then use that book to build their business. It is a super fun episode, so make sure to check out Monday's episode with Julie Broad. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and very excited that you've joined us for today's interview with Mike Compton. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to encourage you, wherever you're listening to this podcast, click that subscribe button. If you're listening through the Jumble Think website, you can find us on all the normal places you listen to podcasts, places like iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and many, many other places. Make sure you go on over to your favorite place to listen to podcasts and click that subscribe button. Now let's take a moment to learn more about today's guest, Mike Compton. My name is Mike Compton. I am executive producer for Three Chairs Productions. So we're a multimedia uh, content production company. Um, Anything you really put on a screen, we can produce for you. Uh, We can tell your story. We can tell, you know, your brand uh, culture. We could tell, um, you know, even if it's a direct response uh, commercial that we're in pre-production for right now, a cleaning product of all things. So what we do is kind of spans all the multimedia. We we like to build emotion. Um, So we like to, the content recreate tells a story such that will move people in one way or another. One of which was for a nonprofit called a kid's place in the pre-production stage of things is really when the story comes to life. And we had asked the executive director, so what, what is it that you're looking for? Because so little background here, this content is going to be played at a luncheon, right? So they have a few hundred people from, you know, all over the, you know, County, uh, looking to donate or have donated to this nonprofit. And, and now it's time for them to open up their checkbooks again, you know, and this is why, and this is where they've been and this is what they're doing. And we ended up creating a, a story that was like, it gives me goosebumps just to even think about it again. And it's actually on our website. It's called, um, it's called a kid's place where they place kids, you know, when they, when they can't live at home, and, and the government takes them over, they're the medium. They're the place that the kids go to that before the government puts them into the system and after they get stripped away from their whatever their their location or whatever their place is, this family lives in a tent in, in, in a backyard somewhere with their seven-year-old daughter and their baby. And the mom was, wasn't there and, and all the reasons you could think of. And, and these kids were brought to a kid's place and what they do is they specialize in keeping the siblings together. It was just moving to see, you know, cause we get to go to these luncheons. We get to watch the reactions we get to see, you know, cause we're, we're a sponsor too. And, and we get to see the tears and the, the emotions that these people get just from watching our content, which is something motivating. And that's why we, we love working with nonprofits because we can touch so many lives and so many hearts in, in different, uh, in different ways. Well, in today's um, ever, uh, you know, growing fast paced society where the attention spans are so small anymore. Um, you need video to tell your story and nobody reads anything. Unfortunately, not everybody, I mean, not nobody, but a lot of the people nowadays want to see what's going on. They want to see the CEO. They want to see the brand. They want to, they want to see themselves in a lifestyle shot. They want to be a part of it faster and in a more quick pace and, and, we feel like video is crucial uh, to doing that, to bringing um, potential buyers or uh, brand advocates to your brand in a, in a, in a quicker and a more compelling way. 
So we're moving into installations in arenas, and um, that means interactive 360. We're we're changing a, a, what's called a quad in an arena where the with this you know brand sponsors every year and they have the branding in there, but we're changing this for the certain brands and we're reskinning the walls and we're putting some interactive um, displays in there. Like there's an interactive monitor and I won't get into specifics because it's not done yet. Uh, but we're, we're having to go through the arena to get approvals on certain brands that are coming into their arena, like you know, a certain monitor or a certain contractors. Well, they only use one certain monitor. That certain monitor happens to be double the price of any monitor that we found. So setting expectations, keeping those expectations, keeping the budget and having to deal with outside uh, elements and outside opinions is right now what challenging me at this moment, actually. We've already begun to uh, toward the goal, which is um, expanding out of the Tampa Bay market into, we're, we're in Nashville right now, uh, we're moving into Charleston, we're in Miami, uh, Detroit. Um, we want to get into different markets nationwide and just keep growing and keep building our, our team uh, of storytellers. In a moment, we'll join our interview with Mike Compton. But first, if you have a big idea and dream, don't try to do it on your own. Find a coach and mentor to help you along the way. If you're looking for one, the team at JumbleThink would love to be your partner. You can learn how we can help you by swinging on over to jumblethink.com slash consulting. That's jumblethink.com slash consulting. And learn more about our coaching and consulting services and how we can help you take that idea and dream and turn it into a reality. We are so excited to start the conversation with you and be the partner you've been looking for to helping your dream and idea turn from an idea and dream and into a reality. Now let's join our interview with Mike Compton. My guest today is Mike Compton. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's a pleasure. You are... Uh, Doing a lot of fun things, but before we dive into talking about what you're doing and getting some great wisdom from you, can you share a couple ways people can connect with you? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for asking. It's a great question. They can connect with me um, through email at mike at threechairsproductions.com. You can contact us through our website at www.threechairsproductions.com and our contact, contact us page. Um and uh, find me on the uh, Instawebs. Um, I think you should have all the information too, uh, uh, to share that. So we're going to talk a lot about your business, what you're doing. We're going to go into all of those fun things. We have to start right from the top. You run a company uh, with George, your uh, partner in business, and it's called Three Chairs Productions. I think it's a fun name. What does that mean, Three Chairs Production, <laughs> and where did that name come from? Yeah, it's... Uh, it means George, our creative director uh, slash co-owner, looked into a room and saw three chairs. <laughs> um, he's going to hate that I said that, but uh, that's that's the truth. Um, and he went through a list of names, and I'm like, wow, that sounds interesting. It sounds conversational. It sounds like there wants to be more of a story to it. Let's go with that. Uh, so we kind of built um, the three pillars, which is uh, production, creative, and you, the client. Very cool. I love the name. I think it's a it's a fun name, and uh, your logo is really cool too. Uh, so I, I really love that. Thank you. You obviously are in the world of video production, making videos for uh, customers to tell their story, um, and I, I think we're in a really interesting time in in uh, media because we've gone from this traditional integration of video for brands where it's like, hey, here's the product, uh, buy, uh, buy the product. And there's a little bit of storytelling, but we're going into the season and time in which story and narrative and the bigger picture to reinforce whether it's a product or service or a brand uh, is being integrated into that process. Tell us a little bit about um, how video and storytelling go hand in hand. Uh, I mean, even back... In, in when it, we first began, like people were always telling stories visually. Um, you know, the cavemen were always drawing on the caves and telling their stories. And, and you know, um, it's still the same today where people want to tell their story and they want to visualize it and they want to show people, they want to share, they want to engage, they want to have p other people engage with them. 
And, and it's still true today. And it's even more important today because today's uh, attention spans are so short that, you know, people just don't have or want to have the time to engage in your story unless you hit them hard up front and get them interested and get them uh, attached to find more, you know, um, and that's really the goal, isn't it? Is always to engage them and, and have people want, want to find more, want to see more about you. In the beginning, uh, in the intro, you talked a little bit about different phases of production. There's pre-production, there's production, post-production. Uh, I think it's a good foundation for the rest of the interview if we kind of dive into what those different phases are. Can you share a little bit about what uh, pre and production and post-production all are and what they look like? Oh, wow. Yeah. No, thanks for asking, Michael. Um, pre-production is my favorite part of the whole uh, cog um, where we really get to nail down what the story wants to be. We get to get creative if we need to get creative. We get to, you know, write it down. I mean, it all has to be written down and it all has to be uh, dotted, you know, and crossed. And and people need to um, really want to uh, sign off on the story that we're about to tell before we tell it. And that's crucial. Um, it's crucial that everybody's on the same page. And this is the story that we're going to tell. Because when it comes to, you know, production, um, we need to uh, be as straight line as possible, uh, no questions asked. So when my crew uh, gets to the location, they know exactly where to do, what to do, where to go. Um, the talent knows exactly what happens, you know, and, and all that happens in pre-production. Everybody gets on the same page. The scripts are all passed out. Call sheets are all written. You know, crew can go anywhere from five to 20 to th on up uh, people crew. And that's a lot of moving parts. And if there's one of those crew members that aren't sure what they're doing in front of the client, that's not good. So we button everything up in pre-production right. so that production is seamless, you know, and the client walks on set and they know and they're getting exactly what they saw um, on the storyboards, which also is pre-production, um, you know, finding the right location. <laughs> Uh, scouting that location uh, a couple times, you know, making sure that uh, the director sees the vision, making sure that the gaffer knows where all the power outlets are and, and if we have to bring a, gen a generator or not, or, you know, even down to the craft service, um, you know, where does the food go? Where's the bathrooms? You know, all that gets done in, in mm. location scouting, which is pre-production. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, there's just so many things that happen in pre-production just to make sure that, like I said, that uh, the, um, the day of production, which is costly sometimes, you know, so we have to make the most of our, our, our buck. Um, when it comes to day of production, we're on location where we're, everybody's working, we're moving forward, clients happy, we're all happy, things are getting signed off. And then we put it into the, the hard drive, you know, and then we, we, we back it up three times if we have to, just, be, <laughs> just in case you never know things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then it comes into the post-production stage and a lot of the stuff again, where the editor knows what to do happens in pre-production. Uh, yeah. There's script okay. notes and, you know, during production that, you know, there's, there's script notes and they're taking detailed information on what was said and what was a good take, what wasn't, a good take. And then now the, finally the editor can take all that information that we gave them in pre-production can take the information that we get them in the script notes and move like, boom, start, go, let's work three days in a row, four days in a row, whatever, maybe it's just a day and let's knock it out. Um, you know, motion graphics knows where they need to be. There are designers already designed everything, you know, from logo to call to action to, you know, any kind of copy that goes on screen and they, and then now the editor just can put all the magic into the, uh, into the work and, and turn out a great story whatever that story wants to be. So there's in a weird winded way, pre-production, production and post-production. <laughs> One of the things that is fundamental to three chairs productions is your philosophy of a three C culture. Mm -hmm. Let's start off. What is the three C culture? What are the three C's? Uh, thanks for asking the three C culture. Uh, Michael is uh, creative. Um, we feel like just because the budget might not be where it wants to be for a, a Super Bowl commercial doesn't mean that the story has to hurt. If we scope it down. Yeah. Uh, we make it work. Um, we scope the crew down. We scope some of the creative down. But at the same time, it's still the story that you want. It's still going to be a story that you want to tell. So there's creative. Uh, production works hand in hand with creative. Um, they call me the dream killer. You know, uh, <laughs> creative will go ahead and come up with these great ideas. And I'll be like, well, we, we can, we can do this and we can't do this and we can do that. And, and 
you know, production kind of handles the budgets and handles the client and make sure everybody's copacetic and happy and knows what they're doing. And then the ultimate is the ultimate three uh, C would be the, the client chair, whatever client that wants to be, whether it's an agency client, whether it's a mom and pop shop, whether it's um, a startup, whether it's a, a fortune 500 company. Uh, we've got a few banks that we work with and they need content. And so that would be the third chair is, is the, um, is you. Okay, so one of the keys to what you do is collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a partnership. It's a partnership with your team, uh, bringing the story to life, creating the story, crafting the content, uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, producing it so it's a finished product. Mm -hmm. And then there's also collaboration with the people that are your clients or you're representing or the story you're telling. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the importance of collaboration in the process of storytelling. Because I think often, you know, we think of the, the maverick storyteller and it's that one-off guy. Maybe they're standing on a stage or maybe the, you know, they've created a narrative and they've told the story. You see the videos on YouTube or where else, uh, every, everywhere else. And uh, you see them, you know, stand, staring into a camera. But there's so much more that goes on to crafting storytelling. Tell us how collaboration plays into that. Collaboration is huge in all the pillars of three chairs. It really, okay. it really doesn't end. Yeah. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, hopefully it continues for years. Uh, okay. We build partnerships in where the collaboration and the communication is crucial. Um, you, you need a, you need, you need a story to be told. You need a certain product to be done at a certain time. I mean, all this needs to be communicated upfront. And a lot of the collaboration, mm -hmm. as I say, happens throughout, but it's in the pre-production. And, and what, what is the story? Who is your target? Um, what kind of emotions are you trying to in, you know, set in place? Are you trying to sell a product? Does there need to be a, a heavy call to action at the end where people go to a website and check out your product some more and maybe see some more video? Or is it just that? Is it just, you know, my nonprofit story where, you know, you have a luncheon and you need to reach 100, 200, 300 people all in one time. And you just need to tell this beautiful, elegant story to have them open up their checkbooks. Then, yes, that, that's another way to collaborate. We just need to know um, exactly what it is. And if you don't know, let's talk about it. What, 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 what do you think it wants to be? Let us do some more research. Um, you know, you, you, you bring your product to the table. You are the best person that knows your product, but mm, maybe not. Maybe a little research might show you something else. And we're, we're the type of company that wants to dive into your business and do the research, see what your competitors are doing, um, see who your who you think your target market is and then who we think your target market is. And then maybe we come into a middle or maybe we, you know, just knowledge is in, knowledge is power. So we try to gather up as much knowledge as possible and collaboration is the only way to do it. We've all been at that party or that place where we're in a group setting and we get stuck with the guy who thinks he's telling great stories and we're sitting there wanting to uh, jump out a window. Right. And, and storytelling is so much more than that. And uh, there's a craft to it. There is a way to assemble narrative and story and to have it be cohesive and emotionally invoking where it draws you in and you want to be a part of the story that's being told. What are some fundamental pillars to being a good storyteller or to telling stories in a way that capture people and encourage them to be part of the narrative? I mean, that's, that's the unicorn, Michael, isn't it? So <laughs> what you're telling me to do right now is create the unicorn for you in a podcast. Um, it, it really is just breaking it down to the core. Okay. What are the core values? What are your core values? What's the story's core values? People resonate in different ways, Michael. They, this different stories take people in different places and they visualize different things. So what we're trying to do is just instill any kind of emotion that sparks wanting to see more. Um, especially, you know, when it comes to shorter frame or shorter form videos, you know, like your 15 second social media spots, we want to instill the story that captures your eye and say, yeah, 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 yeah. Click, 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 click. I want I want more <laughs> of that. And then we build the story even more. Right. So it's really, it's, it's giving them a taste and, um, instilling a reaction that, uh, sets some sort of emotion that, that says, Hey, I, I resonate with this brand. So. Man, it's really knowing it's it's breaking it down to the core and knowing who you're talking to are, are really crucial in building your story. We were just talking about collaboration a couple minutes ago, and collaboration is important 
as you mentioned, you research your client, you work with your client, you help them understand things that they're not seeing, of course, uh, that they're not understanding or uh, things that they may be overthinking or not thinking clearly about. Mm -hmm. When you are approaching the creative process from your team standpoint, Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that process process of like going, hey, here's a great idea that uh, will communicate their story well, or here's a great concept that that people will just be like, oh, that's really cool. I, I, I had no idea that you could even do that kind of thing. So when you're approaching a project, how do you approach that problem of creating an idea that that really plays well through a video? It's back to breaking down the core values and doing the research. Um, okay. So, 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 said pencil company comes to us and says, "Hey, I need any pencils being sold. So I need, I need, I need these pencils sold." Okay. Well, so what does your pencil look like? What are we dealing with? Let's let's take a look at it. What do you think that is going to sell your pencil? Okay. Well, let's look at the market. Who's buying pencils? You know, what are they really wanting? The, are they really writing down? Is it their job? Are they artists? Like how, how do artists speak? What do, what do artists um, engage with? What, you know, what sets off a, a, an artist if, you, if that's what our niche wants to be for this pencil? Maybe it's a great pencil for artists. Let's talk their language. What are they saying? Where are they going? Um, digitally, you know, where are they? You know, um, let's, let's find your perfect target and, and speak their language to them and use artistic type language. You use creative um, any type of creative that can, that can really resonate with them. And then we're going to sell a ton of pencils for you to these people, or maybe it's an educator. So what is an educator looking for? Where are they talking to? Who are they talking to? Um, where are they buying these pencils? How do we get in front of, you know, so it's all about finding the core value and speaking the language of the person that you're, that is viewing your product. Okay, so what I think I'm hearing you say, and I want to make sure I'm getting this right, yep. in storytelling, one of the fundamental places in which you need to start is by starting with understanding your audience. Like that's the fundamental where everything else is built upon that. And your audience is the hero. That's where you want to start. That's You can't create story without understanding your audience. Is that a fair assessment of what you're saying? Very fair. Nice work. <laughs> So if that's the fundamental foundation for storytelling, it must be interesting to go to a customer from time to time and say, hey, look, you're saying you're trying to reach X person, but really when we do our research, because I love that you do so much research about your customers and, and the people you're working for. When we did our research, we really found that X was okay, but here's a better audience, audience Y, and here's how we can captivate them to sell more product, to connect with your pro, uh, your, your service, or uh, even just tell the story in which people want to engage with you and be a part of your, your movement. What's that like to have to go to a client and say, love what you're doing, but I think you might be missing some pieces? <laughs> no, you're right. Everybody wants to, everybody knows their product. Everybody has it so tight to their chest that, you know, Right. They're going to push back a little bit. But when you show that you can push back yourself a little bit with research and data to back up your, your, you know, your pushback, they're going to come, they're going to, they're going to think about it. They're going to think twice. And at the end of the day, it's, it's the client's vision. Mm -hmm. So if you take my research and you say, well, you know what? Thank you. We're going to put that on the shelf for now, but really I feel passionate about this vision that I have here. Oh my gosh, 100%. (laughs) We're going to, blow that vision away. You're going to love it. Right. But just know that we were dedicated enough to your brand to want to do this research for you. And, and if, and if this doesn't work, like I said, we built partnerships, we collaborate. If, 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 if your vision doesn't work and we give it three months of digital buy and, and, you know, maybe we buy some television, you're just not seeing the tick, you know, the uptick. Well, Hey client, let's give this a try. You know, and let's, you know, so now we throw an, a little bit of budget to uh, production and media and, and, and we try this after three months. Um, so again, we don't come in all like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We come <laughs> in and we say, no, this is what we, we found. And if you agree, yeah. let's explore. I love that. I think that's so powerful. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, as a, as a person that's built websites and done design and development, that's what our business did for years and years. I know that for me, there's been times where you're, 
you're honestly trying to do what's best for the client. And sometimes they can't see because they're so entrenched in what they're doing. And you're helping them understand you're being that advocate for them when they don't know that maybe they need to pivot or maybe there's a better way to communicate. And I just think what you said there is so powerful. It really, uh, it shows that, uh, yeah, the customer often gets what they want, um, but it's not always what they need. And, and when they have that advocate, when they have that partner in a videographer or in a creative designer or a web designer or whatever that is for them in that partnership, having that person and trusting them to see the vision and be able to uh, move that vision forward in a way that's healthy for the business is a powerful tool for that entrepreneur, for that business leader to really know that, hey, you know, I know what I know, but there are other people that know what they know and I need to trust them. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And you don't want your cousin's nephew's son to shoot your videos for you. I mean, right. do it and get it done and, and, and have it. You know, it is what it is. There's a lot of room for that now in the, in the whole video space. But when it comes down to wanting to look professional, really wanting to tell your story the right way, you, you're going to want to hire a professional. You're going to want to trust somebody to, uh, to do that. And the great part about what we have is we've got different directors and different DPs and different crews for each project. Um, okay. Or, you know, we've got our high end group that, you know, shoots with the high end, you know, Alexas and the reds and access to all those beautiful cameras and all the beautiful lenses. Or we've got the, you know, the FS7 or, you know, not to downplay that. It's a great camera or the DSLRs or, you know, we shoot on location and it's your location or we shoot in our studio. I mean, there's different ways to skin it. Um, so so we don't you don't have to break your pocketbook. Yeah. And you still get a good creative spot, whatever that is. Well, let's talk about how. We've talked a lot about compiling the story, communicating your message. How can people use video as an asset for them in promoting whatever they're doing, their business, their products, their services? How can people use video as a tool in the era in which we live? So much fun. What a great question, because there, it, it, there's so many different ways to reach an audience anymore, um, whether it's signage in New York, in, you know, Times Square or... It's a, you know, a GIF, an animated GIF or a seven second social media spot on, you know, Facebook or, or whatever, Snapchat or whatever it wants to be. Um, there's just so many ways to do it. So what we do typically is we shoot as if it was going to be a broadcast commercial. So we shoot high res, you know, 4K, it's going to get down to 1080 for broadcast and it's going to be picturesque, beautiful piece. Well, we then cut accordingly so we've got maybe it's a culture <laughs> film that's going on or startup and you really want to tell people about your you know your kickstarter video whatever it wants to be we can create that and then we can create sh sh clips but the key part of that is knowing what you want and how you want to deliver the content before we shoot so we can add those into the script okay so we can do a seven second teaser yeah you know that goes on the instagrams and we can go ahead and, and then buy some media or buy some facebook time um with those type of clips and then lead them to your, you know, your website and maybe to landing page uh, that has more of what they want to see, more video, uh, more copy of what's going on. And then we can, what's great is now we have them and now we can capture their data and now we know where they came yeah. from. And now we offer, Hey, so, you know, the funnel, <laughs> we say, Hey, you know, you like this. Well, there's more yeah. on the back end. Yeah. Give me your email address. Give me what you're interested in. And, and I'll even give you more of what, what you want to see and then potentially a takeaway from that. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's a, just a PDF of, 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 a, of a graphic or something educational or whether it's a, a freebie that you email or you mail out to somebody, whatever it is, there's so many different avenues and ways to do it. But the core, right, it still goes back to the story and it still goes back to who you're talking to. Um, and we kind of help massage that. You know, we help develop, okay, do you want social? Okay, we want social. Do you want a culture film? The culture film's going to live here. What does it want to look like? Okay, now what are the 15 seconds pieces? What are the seven second pieces want to look like? All right, let's shoot it all in one day. Shoot it high res, you know, whatever it wants to be. Get all the lights, get all my crew out there. Make the best content possible. Are you an actor or are you hiring actors? You know, we yeah. can do that. Yeah. So, you know, so... Um, it all kind of comes together at the end. And then we, in the post-production process, you know, we know exactly what the seven second clip is in and out, boom, boom, you know, get a call to action and, and we can move on. Or again, it's just, maybe it's just the nonprofit video luncheon piece. 
Maybe it's an interactive piece that plays in a stadium somewhere on a monitor that talks about your story. Uh, there's just so, so much fun because there's so many ways to, to deliver great stories nowadays. Back in my day. <laughs> you uh, talked a lot about how you can leverage video and, and it can be Facebook ads. It can be Instagram. It can be on traditional media outlets, uh, billboards and uh, stadiums, all these kind of cool places. But one of the things I know that you're passionate about mm -hmm. is understanding how video can be a tool inside of your own company's culture and go beyond just um, using it as an advertisement piece. Although that's an important piece, there's more in which you can use video to communicate your message to your team or create culture. Share a little bit about how video can be leveraged in that way. Great question, Michael. No, you're spot on. And that's really where our business has been ticking a lot lately is the okay. internal corporate yeah. um, communications. I mean, so we're even doing quarterly reports <laughs> on video, not okay. just so, so, you know, the, 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 the known quarterly report is you're on a speakerphone and you're at a conference table and you got 12 other people on a conference table and you got another person, you know, cities yeah. away in another conference room sitting around listening to these numbers and listening to people talk. Nobody wants everyone to bored that. out of their mind, you're wasting people's time. I yeah. mean, it's information <laughs> that people need. Granted, I yeah. get that. But let's go ahead and deliver Just send, it. You know? Send the email if you're going to be that boring. <laughs> Yeah, right. Let's let's deliver it in a in a fun, engaging way. Where now right. you're not only giving the the important information across, but you're also bringing your your employees into you, into your culture. Okay. You're showing them you're yeah. being in front of the camera. Being in front of the camera is never easy to begin with. Try being the CEO of a bank, right, and a vice president of a bank. <laughs> you know, uh, on a fishing boat. You know, in in you know St. Pete, uh, talking about the quarterly report, or at you know a yeah. coffee shop. And it was your client's coffee shop and you have your group there and it's just maybe three or four of the people that really need to talk about what, you know, what's going on. And, and now you're kind of more engaging your people are drinking and having coffee and, you know, whatever, whatever have you. Um, there's different ways to, to, to place people in different circumstances and write it so that it's more engaging, uh, yet educational, right? I mean, these still are long videos mm -hmm. anywhere from 20 minutes right. on, or it could be, um, you know, jeans day. Okay. We're having jeans day and this is a new thing <laughs> in my culture. I'm going to post a video or send a video out to my internal team and they're going to be excited because they have to spend 50 cents on jeans, which is awesome. But you have this video that shows it, you know, there's, there's different yeah. internal communication ways that, you know, that can really benefit a, a brand, especially the, the big brands out there that, that the CEOs are unapproachable, you know, and <laughs> like, Oh, they never talk right. to us. Well, because they're busy, right? Okay, you know, but let's take a half of their day and right. shoot a video and it'll, it'll tenfold and you'll hit so many different lives and you'll better your, your culture in just, you know, 20 minutes. I want to step back. We've talked a lot about what your business does. We've talked a lot about storytelling and also on um, using video as a, an asset for your business. I want to hear a little bit more of your story. When did this passion for videography, filmmaking, and storytelling really start? Uh, yeah, uh, great question. It started, uh, my passion for storytelling started with Saving Private Ryan, whatever, judge away. <laughs> uh, back in 2000 or whatever it came out, I'm like, you know, the, the story was great. Yeah. But then I just felt different emotions. And I'm like, I want other people to feel these emotions. I want other people to have goosebumps when they see this or think a certain way and, and really kind of change. And, you know, my generation uh, has always been the, the type of, you know, let's change the world. Yeah. Well, this is my way of changing the world. Yeah. You know, a, a video at a time as sappy as it sounds. Um, <laughs> but back then, that's what it was. So it was in college at Michigan State University. We I had to, you know, kind of make my own path and talk wow. to the counselors and say, this is what I want to do. Well, you don't have this class. So I'm like, oh, well, this is what I'm doing. And so we just kind of <laughs> figured it out. Yeah. And, you know, it was just at the cusp of where I didn't have to splice anything. Yeah. I went, went into the digital world of things because Final Cut was just coming out right about that time. Okay. So it made storytelling more accessible. I, you know, you didn't have to have these big machines to tell the stories and, and all the money. Uh, to, you know, to, to buy the film and all that stuff. It was all right there and it was all accessible for us. So then I was lucky enough to um, to finagle my way into a meeting with Red Bull and end up wow. being their, their, their student ambassador where I found the students 
found the judges, found the production company, the location that the film fest was going to be in. And we made six films over a summer. And I was, my film show was happened to be chosen under an alias. Wow. And, wow. and uh, I'm like, Hey, it's me. Uh, oh, well, well, I'm doing it. So, you know, that whole thing, <laughs> I was able to produce my own film. I was able to help teams. We had a few hundred people in attendance at the end of the day. Red Wolf said it was a success and, you know, uh, they didn't do it ever again. So I don't know how successful I was, but it was the <laughs> point where, you know, I was like, yes, this is what I'm doing uh, for the rest of my life. Um, after that, after college, it was, it was bartending, parking cars, serving tables, wow. uh, traveling, wow. you know, moving to Florida, you know, um, all the same, you know, building my own production company, dissolving my own production company, you know, getting partners moving into a bigger production company um, in the area, really learning my craft. At that point, I was able to know everybody and meet everybody because that's the kind of person I am. And then, you know, for what, you know, they had to do cutbacks. So, you know, I got the ax. And now after that, they, you know, which forced me to do my own thing, which is, you know, start producing. So, you know, we created Three Chairs Productions shortly after that uh, with my creative director, George Zwerko. Um, and and it's been kind of it's been four or five years now wow and uh we've been taking in the right direction and, and telling stories and and uh, having fun doing it and i think that's the important thing about knowing us and wanting to work with us is we like to have a good time telling a story yeah. um we yeah. do work we work hard yeah we work hours lots of hours lots of research <laughs> lots of producing but we enjoy what we do so, so it's not good. a job it's it's a career for us so good. There's so much more we can talk about today. Uh, before we wrap up this portion of the interview, I want to make sure that we remind people how they can find you again uh, so they can connect up. The easiest way is uh, to, to connect with me, Michael. The easiest way is to email me at Mike, M-I-K-E, at three, it's spelled out, three chairs, plural, like you sit in a chair, productions, plural, dot com. Um, I am, uh, you know, three chairs productions is on Facebook. Uh, we do a poor job on Twitter <laughs> and I, I think it's been like two years wow. since I've even posted wow. anything on Twitter. I'm wow. bad. I'm so bad. I just let, let anyways. Um, and then Instagram, you know, but, uh, but it's really, it's really getting out and meeting people like yourself, Michael. That's, that's what we like to do to really get our name out. And we'll of course include all those links and everything else in the episode notes. So if you want to find them real easy, check the episode notes. We'll have links right there. You can click on over and get in touch with Mike and his team at Three Chairs Productions. In a moment, we'll be right back with our rapid fire questions and Mike Copton. Chasing big ideas and dreams can be scary and hard to do. But you don't have to do it alone. The Jumble Think team is here to help you. Whether it's to answer a simple question or give you strategies of taking your idea and making it a reality, our team would love to be your partner, your coach, or your consultant. Swing on over to jumblethink.com slash consulting. That's jumblethink.com slash consulting to learn more about how our team can help you in taking that idea and dream from an idea and make it into a reality. Now let's join our rapid fire questions with Mike Compton. We are back with Mike Compton. He is one of the business owners for Three Chairs Productions. Mike, are you ready for some rapid fire questions? Let's bring it. Question number one, what is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Write it down. Love that. Why is that so important? It all has to be written down. Every idea and every scene and every movie and every video it needs to be written down to communicate to all the parties. Love that. Your crew, your creative, doesn't matter. Your client, it all needs to be written down. Very, very cool. What is one change you'd like to see in the world? Oh, I can't stand violence. I don't do well with violence. And this whole just awful culture that we live in right now, the kids are shooting kids. It's just dry. It's, it's got me to a point I, I can't even deal with it. Uh, so that would be one thing, like get rid of, you know, whatever automatic weapon thing or whatever you, I don't know, stop, <laughs> stop <laughs> killing each other. For sure. What do you want your legacy to be? So I've got two, um, uh, two boys, okay. two and a half years old apiece. All right. And, um, I want them to, to grow up in a, in a, in a world that is inclusive and, and, and cultural and, uh, you know, forward thinking, free thinking, just whatever they want to do. You know, I was blessed enough to be able to do uh, my passion uh, to live, to live out my dreams to a point. And I hope that uh, they will too. You are working in the world of creativity and ideas all the time. 
How do you find or where do you find inspiration? Everywhere. In car rides, in, you know, anywhere where there's people, anywhere uh, you kind of like out walking outside to lunch, you can find inspiration. Uh, new cities, new places, new people. Uh, you just got to get out. You can't sit back behind the uh, computer and, feel, and think you're going to get inspired by an idea because it's just not going to happen. You have to get out and live it. Love that. That's so good. What is one book you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read and why? I don't care if you're a dreamer or an entrepreneur. You need to read um, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, cool. Uh, that's, just a, that's just a tidbit there. It's just kind of like, you know, core reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as a creative book is concerned, hmm, just read. Okay. I, 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 you know, that's just, that's just a very vague answer, but, um, there's so many creative books out there and so many different ways you can be inspired by a book. Just opening up a book period yeah. is a good yeah. start. What is one tool that is significant for the success of your business? Communication. You got to like, I, well, transparency. How about that? Okay. Is, uh, both kind of go hand in hand. You have to communicate each phase. You got to keep up to date with progress on jobs. Uh, you got to communicate with your crew. You got to communicate with your creative and the creative has to communicate with the client. And sometimes that doesn't mess well. So you got to, you just got to communicate and, and be transparent. Very, very fun. Very good advice. I love it. What's one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Uh, grit. Okay. Um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wake up every day and you gotta get to work and you gotta do something. Okay. Um, no matter if you can't find a project or you can't come up with a creative idea, go team up and figure it out. Right. Find other people to help you. Yeah. That's crucial. You can't do it all yourself. You gotta get out and you gotta live and you gotta meet people and you gotta get inspired. How do you start and finish your day? Uh, so <laughs> many different ways every day. Okay. Um, being in our world, we're just... Like I was, I was editing a second ago, uh, hacking my way through After Effects until my hero showed up <laughs> and took over for me. Yeah. Um, or you know, I'm putting a bid together for um, an installation, or or we're we're talking through creative for a nonprofit video. So this doesn't answer your question. So how do I get up every day with a smoothie? Okay. And um, with my boys in my bed, kicking. Me. <laughs> And wanting to watch TV uh, and saying, wake up, daddy. And then at night, trying to get them to go to sleep is a whole other world. <laughs> <laughs> Completely understand both of those things. Yeah, they kind of took over uh, everything, which is great. Yes. You know, and being an entrepreneur gives us time to, to do what we need to do with them on the family. And yeah. that's, that's kind of why we're blessed. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what would you be doing? <sighs> Man, I mean, I've sold mortgages. I've sold cars. I've bartended, I've waited tables, <laughs> I've painted, I've built pools, I've uh, I've done just about everything. I feel like, uh, and I wouldn't want to do any of those things over this. Uh, so, what would I be doing? I would probably be working for somebody doing this. And our final rapid fire question is: What is one dream you are still wanting to fulfill in your own life? I want to do more traveling. Anywhere specific? Overseas, anywhere. Just get me on a boat, take me overseas. Let me be able to find some other cultures and bring my kids and my wife with me. That's so cool. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to give you one last moment to give us a thought that you want to leave us with today. Um, one thought that I would like to leave you and your listeners today is is just to be, be true to yourself, be true to your brand, um, be transparent with everybody around you and uh, good things will happen and the story will come out and you'll be able to find that creative sweet spot. Um, by building the right team, you know, you have to fail, fail often, fail quick and then do it again. And then, you know, yes, good things will eventually happen. Very, very good insights. Mike, thanks so much for taking time out, sharing your story, some great insight into the world of videography, into storytelling and ultimately how we can reach uh, people with with our 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 passions, with who we are. I really appreciate your time. No, it was a great conversation, Michael. I really appreciate being on the show. And, and thanks, to, uh, thanks to you and your listeners. You guys are doing beautiful, wonderful things. Once again, I want to thank today's guest, Mike Compton, for taking time out, sharing his story, and giving us amazing insights into the creative world of storytelling through videography. If you want to connect up with Mike, make sure you check out the links in the episode notes. 
On Monday's episode, our guest is Julie Broad, the founder of Book Launchers. Make sure to check out Monday's episode with Julie. Chasing big ideas and dreams can be scary, it can be hard, and it can be overwhelming. But you don't have to do it alone. The Jumble Think team is here to help you take that idea, take that dream, and come up with some steps you can take and walk you through the process of turning an idea into a reality. Swing on over to jumblethink.com slash consulting. That's jumblethink.com slash consulting to learn more about how we can help you turn that idea, turn that dream into a reality. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode. It's always an honor to have you listening to our episodes. It means the world to me that you would take time out to listen to our guests and to hear our stories of chasing big ideas and dreams. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with this final thought. You can fix anything but a blank page. That was said by Nora Roberts. Don't let your life, don't let your company be a blank page. Start filling that page with stories. Stories that tell of your whys and your passions and the heartbeat that defines who you are. Get out there. Begin to craft that story. Write the pages of your life. Write the pages of your business. Share them to the world in a story that captivates, encourages, and causes others to be drawn into the story and then challenged to move into their own story. Your story is significant and the world needs it. So get out there. Leave no page blank. Get out there and do something. Do something amazing with those big ideas and dreams. Until next time, dream big, do amazing things, and change the world around you. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.